for three shows at First Arena. Friday, January 17th, and Saturday, January 18th, come taste the best wine and beer in the Twin Tiers. Many samples from local wineries, cheeses, cigars, and many more. Tickets can be purchased at the Holiday Inn or the First Arena box office. Get your tickets early. Call 734-PUCK. Wine and Beer Festival on Ice at the First Arena. The Elmira Enforcers are helping the less fortunate this holiday season. Tuesday, December 24th at First Arena from noon to 2. For those in need, come receive free winter clothing, free haircuts, and a free Christmas dinner. Your Elmira Enforcers will be serving you Christmas dinner. Thank you to our great sponsors, First Transit, Billiard, Just-In-Time Gutters, Hart, Save-A-Lot, and Flynn Law Firm. The Elmira Enforcers are at home Friday, December 26th and Saturday, December 27th. Friday, December 26th, it's free Pepsi Frisbee Night. Saturday, December 27th, it's free Jubilee Foods Thunderstick Night. That's Friday, December 26th and Saturday, December 27th at First Arena. Get your tickets early. Call 734-PAW. Elmira Enforcers, serve and protect. Hello, Forces fans. I'm John Clement, here live, ready to get things started from Battle Creek, Michigan. I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday season. I know I certainly am, as the team is back and on a, well, you can't call it a streak yet, one game in a row, but hey, we beat those dreaded Carolina Thunderbirds. Finally got it done as Andrew, or excuse me, as Dustin Skinner put in two shootout goals in order to give the Enforcers the victory. And whoo, what a weekend! That capped off down in Carolina. Now two huge games pre-holiday break against the Battle Creek Rumble Bees. Uh, the facility, a little bit more tight, so I'm sure it's going to be very, very noisy in here. The fans are crowded in all around us, right in front of us here at the uh, Battle Creek. The, they call it the rink. Uh, I recommended calling it the hive. I think that makes a little bit more sense with the, the theme. Uh, the mascot's down there getting set in a Santa suit. I mean, it is looking to be a heck of a time here at the rink in Battle Creek. The Enforcers are getting set and a bit of a change to the lineup. I'll tell you what, the Enforcers are going to be missing some pieces. Obviously, Ahmed Mafus, Andrew Harrison, both out with those upper body injuries. Cameron Yarwood going to be out with a lower body injury. But not to fret, Cameron Yarwood will take over the bench duties here tonight. He will be the head coach as head coach Brent Clark will wear number 89 and put himself on the ice. We saw him for warm-ups and... Uh, Looks pretty good out there. Looks looks like he hasn't lost a step, so we're looking forward to seeing what he can do here tonight. Of course, uh, some more news breaking late last night. Gino Mini has been assigned from Battle Creek over to your Elmira Enforcers in exchange for Nathan Pellegra. Pellegra obviously uh, was out of the team's plans for a little bit, but uh, Pellegra will have a new chance to get a start here in Battle Creek. I'm not sure that he's here tonight, but the Enforcers do get Gino Mini. And he brings two goals, three assists, five points, 21 penalty minutes over from the Battle Creek Rumble V. So we'll see what he adds to the team. Now, of course, uh, one of the bigger highlights coming up, we talked about it just a minute ago, was Dustin Skinner's two penalty shot goals in the shootout. He came through big when the enforcers needed it most, getting them a victory over Carolina, again with a shortened roster. So uh, shortened roster, not a death knell for the enforcers, to say the least as they'll be looking to get some victories here in Battle Creek, Michigan. Of course, the Battle Creek Rumble Bees will be live at First Arena in just two short weeks. Uh, and I am seeing the comments here as uh, face camera down. <laughs> well, there's not a not a heck of a lot going on here, Quacky. So uh, they're going dark here, apparently. So we are going to get a bit of a pregame show. Uh, we were discussing that beforehand. So we'll see what uh, what's going on as you get a chance to see the beautiful facility that is the rink here at Battle Creek. Uh, the cameraman doing the operating once again. John, the amazing bus driver from Fitzgerald. We appreciate all the hard work as he takes over on the camera crew once again here tonight. The enforcers getting set down in the locker room right by the bhockey.com dashboard along with the Fox's Pizza Den sign hanging up down to our left and right near the Zamboni Tunnel. Only the Zamboni Tunnel really separating the two teams, so this could be interesting if this one gets physical. The Enforcers coming in with a 7-7, 2-1 record, good enough for 24 points, fourth in the East, while Battle Creek comes in trying to break their 0-20 stretch as they have 
no points coming in in fifth in the West. So they'll be looking to uh, score their first points, get their first win, and the enforcers will turn right back to a trusted face as we want to talk about the starting goaltenders tonight. Tonight's goaltender matchup brought to you courtesy of the Elmira Enforcers Pro Shop, conveniently located inside the rec rink. Get your sticks, tape, and skate sharpened and get all the newest and top-of-the-line equipment for your skater or goaltender right at the first arena. Starting matchup tonight, goaltender Troy Passingham puts the pads back on. He is 7-5 and five this year, 3.3 goals against and a 9-1-7 save percentage. No official shutout, but uh, we'll all count that one a couple of games ago when he came in in relief of Michael Stiliotis and, well, he shut the door and got the victory over the Watertown Wolves. On the other side, Jake Mullen comes in. He's played in seven games, has seven losses to his credit, a 7.11 goals against an 862 save percentage. Obviously, no shutouts there. So the uh, enforcers will have to, and we'll have to see what they can do when we get started here in Battle Creek. The last couple of passes for the Zamboni means we're going to head down to Coach's Corner. We'll be right back here on Mixler.com in live on YouTube. Keep it tuned right here. Down here for a special edition of Coach's Corner with head coach tonight, Cameron Yarwood. Cameron, uh, getting your chance behind the bench here tonight. Uh, what's the difference here getting into the game planning aspect of things? Uh, you know, it's uh, we can't take any team lightly here. I mean, uh, we have uh, Kyle Stevens here. Hopefully he plays a, it's a game. Glenn Patterson's back there. He's back. Um, and uh, we can't just take any team lightly. We just have the uh, four check, back check, and, you know, that's it. Well, you got uh, head coach Brent Clark, the normal guy behind the bench, stepping into uniform tonight. Uh, how do you plan to utilize him and his skill set? Um, uh, hopefully he'll be a great asset to the team. Um, he's on a line with Dustin Skinner, and, uh, you know, they practiced all week. And it looked like they were had some good chemistry there, so it um, should be a good one. When you talk about veteran leadership, uh, obviously guys like Skinner, Coach Clark, uh, those are veterans in the league for sure. Uh, when they come in and are looking to make an impact, uh, does that help you as a coach or does it, uh, does it make it something you have to watch? Of course, it makes my job a whole, a whole lot easier, you know, since uh, they've been around the league for a while. And um, I'm just hoping to coach this team to victory. Well, the uh, the substitution for player for coach has gone very well. Uh, backup goaltender Joe Young is one and zero on the season with the uh, with the head coaching role. Look, big shoes to fill there. How do you plan to do that here tonight? Oh, uh, hopefully I fill those shoes. Uh, I mean, shouldn't be tough, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can fulfill them. All right. Well, we've got a, a power play that's really been clicking lately. Special teams have scored in the last 14 games now. What's been the secret behind the success of the special teams? Uh, we're just finally just all working together, coming together as, as a unit. And uh, it just really seems to just be working. Um, yeah. Well, having a guy like you out of the lineup, obviously, is a big hole. Uh, you fill a lot of minutes. Who's going to have to step up in your place to make you guys come out successfully here tonight? Uh, I mean, maybe have uh, Glenn Patterson back there, Dale Dion. Um, they're, they're going to do a terrific job back there. And we uh, just added another new defenseman, automatically. Hopefully, uh, well, I know he'll probably he'll do a good job back there, too. And, uh, yeah. All right. Thanks, Coach. I'll let you get back to it. We'll be back here on the Mixler.com pregame show. Well, there you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Cameron Yarwood taking over the coaching duties tonight. We'll have to see what he adds to the bench boss role here tonight, live from Battle Creek. Of course, before we get too much deeper into everything, tonight's lineup scratch is brought to you by Arnett Health, the official health care provider of your Elmira Enforcers. Arnett Health, come to expect the best. www.arnetthealth.org. Joe Young, a scratch here tonight. Andrew Harrison, Ahmed Mafus, and Cameron Yarwood. All the scratches for your enforcers here tonight. On the other side of the coin, it's going to be Sebastian Crystal, Austin Weber, Nikita Sedanko, Rick Sigili, Nathan Margitz, a former Elmira Enforcer, and Mike Thomas will all be out of the lineup. So the enforcers, uh, of course, dealing with a, a vastly different lineup here for the Battle Creek Rumble Bees. Uh, they haven't seen this before. There's a few names that are going to ring a bell uh, as you go through that lineup, but uh, a lot of these names are going to be first time. I mean, Terry played in Port Huron last year. That's obviously known. Ryan Elves, kid who played mentor last season. I mean, these are names they'll know, but that's two out of a roster of 18 uh, the enforcer is certainly going to have some uh, some making up to do here as now we're starting to see the lights go out, much like First Arena, as the officials take to the ice. Four-man crew as they uh, take to the ice. We've established that this season. That's a brand new thing for the Federal Prospects Hockey League. And there goes Troy Passingham, fresh out of the tunnel. He is ready to go. He'll grab his water bottle. 
and he will head for his net down to our right-hand side. As now we look down towards that left-hand side of the ice, and we should begin to see the Battle Creek Rumblebees take to the ice for the first time. We haven't seen them at all yet, so it should be interesting to get our first look. The uniforms are certainly uh, eye-catching, to say the least. We'll see them here in just a moment as GM head coach Adam Steo, who made his uh, debut in hockey with the Elmira Jackals years ago, uh, he has started to run this Battle Creek organization and now is taking the head coaching role over, so he makes his way down to the bench. And here comes the Rumble Bees as the crowd, I'm sure, is going to pop. It's going to sound very loud here as uh, these in tight enclosed formation will certainly give... Uh, little bit of an illusion to a very, very full house here as they make their way out. And there are those uniforms, bright yellow with some black striping, not quite pinstriping. We're not going to go Yankees here, but it is, uh, does ring a bell as the starting lineup getting introduced here. Certainly uh, an interesting starting lineup. You see the first two guys out, they come out there. They're rather shorter. And then uh, some taller people moving towards the defensive side of the puck, I believe. And now the starting netminder will make his way out. As we've already talked about, starting netminder tonight will be Jake Mullen. Again, 0 for 7 on the season, the 7 1 1 goals against. The enforcer is going to need to get something going here early. As the Rumblebees get introduced, that means it's time for the national anthem. So we'll step aside for a moment. When we come back, the opening face-off brought to you by Rob Sweet State Farm Agency on Market Street in downtown Corning. You can visit them on the web where you can bundle home, auto, and life for a sweet hat trick at sweetrob.com. We'll be right back. Extreme International Ice Racing returns to First Arena, Elmira, New York. Buckley's Automotive and Elmira Heat Treating present World Championship Ice Racing Friday, January 10th and Saturday, January 11th. Come see Speedway Bikes on Ice going from 0 to 60 mile per hour in less than 3 seconds with no brakes. Get your tickets early. Call 734 Fox Craziness with no brakes. This is Glenn Patterson with the Elmira Enforcers. Did you know that you can celebrate your birthday here at First Arena with the Elmira Enforcers? Birthdays should be a memorable event. And with the Enforcers, you'll never forget it. Call today for more details at 607-734-7825. Go Enforcers, go. Hi, this is Marion Decker, and at the Decker Agency, we've got over 34 years experience in helping our clients get the best insurance coverage possible. We're local and we're trusted. We've built our business on the idea that customers should be treated like family. At the Decker Agency, we offer free quotes and consultations. Our clients can build their coverages to best suit their needs and budget. Please stop into our office at 416 East 14th Street in Elmira Heights or call us at 607-734-1100 to schedule your free consultation today. And like the Marion M. Decker Agency LLC on Facebook, at the Decker Agency, we help you protect what matters most. Fresh off the Evan Davies Tournament in Waverly, Hemp Geek is pleased to announce two new locations just inside the Arnett Mall in Big Flats and now Hemp Geek of Owego is celebrating their grand opening on Lake Street October 19th. Hemp Geek offers discounts to military veterans, first responders, and seniors along with the lowest pricing in the CBD market. Hemp Geek, your number one local CBD specialist in the Twin Tiers. All right, and as the National Anthem comes to an end, that means it's time to play hockey. So we look down, and it looks like it's going to be an interesting line combination to start things off. I'm seeing Kyle Stevens, Brendan Hussey, and Brandon Tucker. Marco Novosel on the backside, along with Horvath for the enforcers. And, of course, Troy Passingham standing tall back in the net. For the Rumble Bees, the introduction was made. We'll take a look here as try to get a look at uh, <laughs> who's all coming out here. The netminder, hold on, it appears we've had a change up here? No, here we go. A ceremonial first pitch here. A little different as the backup netminder Eisenhower gets that one done. And now <laughs> Mullen comes back to his net. All right, so as we get set for the first period of action, 20 minutes on the clock, the Elmira Enforcers getting set in their 
usually home black and neon greens as they will take on the Battle Creek Rumble Peas in their bright neon yellow look here. As once again, the enforcers get set to go here live. They're waiting for the Rumble Bees netminder to be ready. Referee seems to be satisfied, and here we go. We are off and moving as the puck is moved along. Bessie passes it back across, and the Rumble Bees trying to make the first entrance into the offensive zone. Chasing it back will be Horvath. Horvath dumps it up the side boards. Couldn't get it over to Tucker. That'll deflect off Kyle Stevens. Picked off once again by Battle Creek, and now Stevens moves it along to Tucker. Tucker passes up to Brennan Hussey. Hussey moving it along over the blue line. Puts the shot on, and an easy save there for Jake Mullen. So not a heck of a uh, not a heck of a toss there on the Rumblebees netminder. So one more time, here comes the enforcers to start things off. Stevens will lose that draw, but it's thrown quickly back behind by Hussey, and now May goes back to chase for Battle Creek. May digging for it there, trying to get it back to the point. It gets back to Marco Novosel. Novosel firing off a skate, and that'll bounce out into the neutral zone and all the way back. Horvath going back to play as Dominic Horvath dumps it back in, giving chase as Kyle Stevens. That one will be wrapped around by the Battle Creek netminder, picked back up behind the goal line by Stevens, and it's dropped back along again. Move back towards the blue line. It's passed across, picking it back up, and moving out is Maxim Noskov. Noskov fires, passing him with an easy save from the side boards there. The enforcers are going to let that shot go all night. You want to take shots from the outside on Troy Passingham, they will be happy to have that happen. So, once again, Elmira set up in a defensive zone as head coach Brent Clark out there for his first shift. Wins the draw right back to Dale Dion. Dion banks it off the boards looking for Sean Reynolds. Reynolds tips it forward. That'll break off the icing call. Coming out to play is Mullen. Reynolds steals it, throws it out in front off the side of the net, and that'll be covered up by Mullen. So, enforcers getting the fast break going as that'll be right back in front here on an offensive zone faceoff. Head coach Brent Clark heading in. He'll take the draw. As he goes up against Alvis, Reynolds banging away at it. The puck bounces back towards the blue line, but it's picked off one more time. Here comes Noskov. Noskov over the blue line, right over the middle, dumps it off, and that's just offside as his winger got in just a step before him. So the enforcers will have a faceoff right in front of their bench. Head coach Cameron Yarwood already pacing. And now he calls for a line change immediately. No, they're gonna, not going to let them do that as Yarwood tried to squeeze that in a little bit late. Cam just getting his coaching legs under him. He's trying to figure it out. As now, once again, a faceoff right outside the enforcer's defensive zone. Head coach Brent Clark a little bit jumpy on that one, and he does win that one back as that puck will be moved. Patterson passes it back and moved ahead by Dale Dion. Dion over the red line. Dumps the puck in, and Battle Creek will have to turn and chase. Coming back after it, he was looking to get it by Dion, but Sean Reynolds steps in and picks it up. Reynolds has it poke-checked away from him, and Battle Creek starts out the other side, right back to the blue line, having some trouble moving it along. That's Luciani. He dumps it back in and out of play. So that'll bring it back to center ice, it appears. So that one did hit the netting, and that'll bring the enforcers back to center ice for the faceoff. Two Battle Creek Rumblebees running into each other there <laughs> before they get to the face-off circle. This is Hudson Michaelis, Willie Dagno, Yanni Skropolis. This will be the, I guess, third line, if you will, as it's pushed forward by Igor Babian. But again, taken back by the Elmira Enforcers, trying to get things set up, pushed back across. Babian dumping it in off of one of the Battle Creek Rumblebees. Mullen will leave the safety of his net, wrapping it back around the backside. Right towards Hudson Michaelis. Michaelis trying to feed it down lower. He was looking for Skropolis, couldn't get it to him. Picked off by Yanni, thrown out in front, chasing after it is Michaelis. Michaelis turns around and looks. Feeds it back to the point. Kept in there by the newest acquisition for the Enforcers Mini, but it's turned back over and Battle Creek starts out the other way. Dumps it down and deflects off the stanchion there and comes right back into the Enforcers zone. Working it out, Willie Dagno chasing it towards the offensive zone. Still with possession, turns around, drop pass there for Skropolis. Skropolis waiting right over to Michaelis. Michaelis circling in front of the net, right in the slot, can't get the shot off. And that'll be pulled away and taken back by Shea Carey, the former Port Huron Prowler. Battle Creek trying to get it out. Quick change there as now Tucker dumps it in. Hudson Michaelis chasing. Michaelis with it. Drops there for Tucker. Tucker sidesteps a man. Looking in front for Skropolis. Skropolis waits. Fires it off a leg and it's turned right back around by Battle Creek. And picking it up there is Noskov. Said his name quite a lot here early on. Noskov certainly pushing the pace of play here. 
As going back to play, it'll be Horvath. Horvath pins it to the boards and chipped along where Brendan Hussey picks it up along the far side board. Deflected off, and that one hits off the board. Some physicality there. Hussey is pinned, and he's not going to take kindly to that as he's staring at the official. Took a hard ride there as he cleared the zone. Trying to get the number on the train that hit him. And I believe that's Shea Carey. So, and I am correct on that. Faceoff will come back into the enforcer's defensive end. As now again, Kyle Stevens out there. Ready to take the draw. He pushes it back. Going back to play will be Horvath. Horvath turning it back around. Feeds it up the boards. Looking for Brendan Hussey. Hussey loses it. That one's fired on and deflected over the net by Marco Novosel's waning stick. Moved back along by Horvath. Trying to shove it up the boards. Tried to get it to Novosel and couldn't. It's broken up there by Battle Creek. Now taken away by Almira and moved back the other side. Tucker pinned against the boards. Trying to move it out. Tucker circles. Still looking. Cuts over the blue line. Once again, over the red line, passes across, looking for Stevens. Stevens into the zone, gets around one D-man. That's Bush Anderson, as now Stevens still with possession. Takes it up the sideboards, dumps it back behind for Brendan Hussey. Hussey with it, looking right towards the slot. Stevens couldn't get the pass cleanly. He'll drop it there for Tucker. Tucker moves it around, still keeps possession, working towards the slot again. He's got Stevens back behind the net. Tucker's pin tight turn, right back in front. Shot and a save there as Novosel pinched. Now Novosel picks it up, passes it along. Picked off here for Tucker. Tucker looking, firing, deflected, and right into the glove as a big save for Jake Mullen. So as I try to get a look at the uh, clock on the far side, I believe there's still 16.03 left to go in a 0-0 game here. One more time, here comes Brent Clark along with Dustin Skinner, Sean Reynolds, Patterson on the backside along with Dale Dion. So that one was quickly jumped as... Uh, Kinsman, another new addition, Eli Kinsman to the Battle Creek Rumblebees, will get his man tossed out of the faceoff circle. Faceoff won here by Battle Creek as Luciani wins it back. Fed back by the Battle Creek defense, trying to move it up, gets it to Howie. Howie flips it out of the zone. That one's going to go down, and no, not an icing as Dale Dion let it go, but it went in on Troy Passingham. Moved around again by Battle Creek, deep in their zone, feeds it out, picked off shot, saved by Passingham as he comes up big again. So, Troy Passingham caught that one right in the gut and got lucky on that. Elmira had given up a few too many chances for Passingham's comfort, I'm sure. Puck is won back by Elmira. Flipped around the boards as Sean Reynolds looking for it on the near side. He feeds it up and into the neutral zone where it's picked off immediately. And Steele will turn it back around. He dumps it back in, no icing, as Passingham leaves his net to play it. Drops there for Dale Dion. Feeds it up the near side boards. It takes a crazy bounce and is picked off and moved back ahead by Steele. Moved into the zone. Battle Creek working it. Right back down towards the front of the net. That'll be deflected around as Dustin Skinner looks at it and lets that one go. Battle Creek still with it. Moves it back around to the near side boards. Flipped up by Sean Reynolds. Tries to feed Skinner and he can't come up with it. He's off sides and has to clear the zone. So a nice idea there with the stretch pass. Just didn't pan out as Reynolds now pinches into the zone. This one's flipped towards center ice. Knocked down there by Dale Dion. Fed back for Glenn Patterson. Patterson looks up ice, waits, taking his time. He starts out himself, gets over the blue line, over the red line, a penalty upcoming here on Battle Creek. Reynolds over the middle, tries to pass for Skinner, dropped again and touched. That'll signal the penalty. Hooking is going to be the call as going to the penalty box will be Alves. Alves, as we said, a member of the Mentor Icebreakers last year, also right now happens to be tied for the points lead for the Battle Creek Rumblebees. Rumblebees right now on the penalty kill, 59%. The Enforcers trying to increase on their 19%. So face-off to be dropped here to the left-hand side of the netminder as the puck is won back by Almira. Dale Dion takes his time, gets to the center of the blue line, fires a kick save there as Reynolds will bury it around the boards. Feeds it over to Brent Clark, drops back behind for Patterson. Patterson out in front, finds Skinner, shot, goal! Dustin Skinner on the power play, and the Enforcers go up one to nothing. Big play there for Dustin Skinner. After coming off a two-shootout goal performance against the Carolina Thunderbirds, he adds his fourth of the season. Nice play there for Dustin Skinner. So the power play was not very long, but the enforcers do get the desired result. 14-29 to go here in period number one. Enforcers lose the draw. Susie plays it back. 
Fed back behind as it's moved around by Bush Anderson. Back over to Susie. Michaelis right on him. Puck fed up the boards where Scropolis tried to get it. Picked off there by Igor Babian. Babian passes it across. Moved back down low. Amira with a long possession once again. Drops it back down. And now Bush Anderson goes back behind his net. He will pick off the puck. And it is loose back there. Hudson Michaelis with it. And he's going to get a tripping call. So, not going to like that one. As I thought Michaelis was going to go. Tripping called. It's apparently going to go against Willie Dagno. So, Dagno goes to the box. This will be a Seneca Beverages penalty kill. Seneca Beverages reminding you not to get boxed by drinking responsibly. The Enforcers, 83% on the penalty kill. The Battle Creek Rumble Bees, just 8% on the power play. Face off one 